friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I've got a card using Lawn Fawn's Hive 5 and Two Can Do It. So I've stamped those images out on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm going to start with the B's, and I'm using Y11, Y13, and Y15 for them little Y15 down at the bottom, and then blending up with the Y13. And then I'll fill in the rest of that space with the Y11, giving them a nice little highlight at the top. I'm also going to do the centers of the flowers with just the darkest two shades, so the Y15 and then a little Y13. For the beehive, I wanted to darken that up a bit, so I brought in YR23. So I'm putting a little line there to separate each section that is drawn in on that beehive. And then I will add a little bit of a shadow around the opening as well. And once I have that YR23 laid in, I'm going to blend that out with the Y15. Just doing nice little strokes there, lines overlapping the previous shade a little bit so that it gets a nice smooth blend there. And then once I have that Y15 laid in, I'm going to fill in the rest with the Y13. So I didn't use the Y11 on this at all. But ultimately I decided it was still too similar in tone to the B's and I wanted it to stand out a bit more. So I added in YR27 for a bit of extra contrast. It's also almost like a rust shade. It has a bit of brown to it. So I think that really adds a lot of dimension in those little creases. And then I'm going to blend that back out in the reverse. So this time the YR23 is becoming my midtone. And then I will use that Y15 and just um, do another layer there. I didn't take it quite all the way up to cover. I left a little sliver of where that Y13 had been showing. So there actually ended up being a little bit of a lighter highlight on each of those. Then I'm moving on to the branches. I'm gonna use E55, E57, and E59 putting that color down at the bottom for the shadow with the E59. And then I'll blend that out with the E57 and save some room there for the E55 to have a highlight at the top. I'm imagining that this is gonna be an outdoor scene, so we're gonna have the sun shining up above. So that is why all of my shadows are going on the underside for these objects. And then I'm gonna do the opening of the hive with those same shades. I just used a little of that E59 in the bottom right corner and then blended up on a diagonal with the E57 and filled in with the E55. And in the meantime, my branch had dried enough that I could go back in with some little details there. You do wanna let it dry if you wanna do extra details on top. You'll see later on what I mean um, if you don't let it dry. But anyway, I'm gonna add some rosy cheeks to my bees with R21 and R22. And then I'm also gonna color in the little flowers. I'm gonna add some shading to the tips with this R21. I started with the R21 because I wasn't sure how dark I wanted to go on those. I did decide that I wanted just a touch of that R22 in there. So I'm adding like just a little dot at the very tip of each of those petals. And then I'll go back and blend that out slightly with the R21. And I'm gonna leave the center around the middle um, white. So then I'm going to switch to R22 and R24. And I'm going to do one of the stripes on the party hat and then that first pennant banner. Then I'll use YR04 and YR07 for the next of each of those. Just the two shades since both of those areas are super tiny. I'll use YG06 and YG07 for the next one. 
And I'm also going to use these shades for some of the leaves on the branches and also some of the extra leaves that I stamped out. Just basically skipping over every other one. I wanted to do um, the leaves into contrasting greens. So I did those with the lighter shade and I did go back in with a little extra of that YG07 to add extra contrast. And then for the other leaves, I wanted to go a bit more cool toned. So I went with G14 and G16. And I'm just going to repeat that same process, just adding in the G16 first and then blending out with the G14. And then I will go back in with a little bit of extra of the G16. Although in this case, the G16 is quite a bit darker than the G14. So I did need to blend that out just a little bit with a second layer of both shades. I'm gonna use BG11 and BG32 for the wings and also the next pennant banner on the row. And this is where I did not let the bee's wings dry for long enough before I decided to add a little extra detail. I wanted to have some veining in there. It did not stand out at all, so I did have to go back and add that back in later on. But for my last shades, I used BG45 and BG49. And then I trimmed all of these images out with their matching dies. For the focal panel, I'm taking a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock that I die cut with the small stitch rectangle stackables. I'm going to take the Lawn Fawn Cloudy Stencil and add some Salvage Patina Distress Oxide ink to that to create a little sky background. And I'm going to turn that stencil and shift it a little bit to um, kind of get some different looks with those clouds. I wanted them kind of coming in almost at a diagonal from either side, um, just for a little bit of a different look. Since I'm working with a smaller panel, I can really move that stencil around and get a different look from it than what I would normally get on a larger panel. I will add a little extra ink down at the bottom to kind of add that hazy look. And I also decided to add just a touch at the top. And then I'm going to press some of that ink onto an acrylic block, add a little spritz of water and mix that up to make it fluid. And then I will splatter that all over that focal panel just to get some nice tiny dots, give it some extra movement. Then I'm going to set this panel aside to dry and pull out another panel of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock. And if you watched my B card from a couple weeks ago where I used all dies and no stamps, I actually created a similar background to what I'm doing now. That time I started out with some sticky note cardstock. This time I'm just starting with plain white and I added some Squeeze Lemonade Distress Oxide ink first. Next I'm gonna bring in some mustard seed and kind of create a little halo around that, overlapping those two a little bit. And uh, that card didn't work out the way that I wanted to because I had an issue with the uh, die that I was using. It was a faulty die, but no big deal. I contacted Lawn Fawn. They sent me a new one. And so I wanted to try to not recreate that card exactly because this card is very different. We obviously have some stamped images here, but I wanted to create at least part of that card that I wasn't able to complete in that video. I did end up finishing that card and just going in a different direction. So um, I wanted to show you in that video that you can always make a card work, but um, I still wanted to do that idea of a shaker card. And so that is what I'm going to do today. I'm adding in some vintage photo around the edges to just darken that up a bit. I'm going for the look of honey. So I wanted a really golden yellow. And I'm just using a piece of paper to keep my fingers out of that ink because I am laying that Distress Oxide ink down pretty heavily. I'm going back now to the mustard seed and then on to the Squeeze Lemonade in the center, just keeping that nice and bright and light in the middle. 
and I did want to just darken up those edges a tiny bit more. I felt like there wasn't quite enough contrast there. So once I had all of those inks blended the way that I wanted them, I'm going to add a little bit of extra interest by pressing some of those inks onto an acrylic block as well. I'm gonna do the vintage photo and the mustard seed, and then I'm adding some plain water in the center. And I'm gonna tap just the plain water first. That's going to react with those Distress Oxide inks and lift that color a bit. Then I'm going to mix up the mustard seed and splatter that and the vintage photo as well. And I'm trying to keep the vintage photo with just really small dots. So I kind of pulled up a bit and um, did it from a higher height away. Then I added some water to my Gansai Tambi Starry Colors and mixed up this coppery shade. And I'm going to splatter that all over the background as well. It'll give me a really nice sheen when you tip it into the light. And I thought that would be really pretty on this background. And then um, off screen, I'm also going to do a card front with the sticky note. And then I just used the squeeze lemonade and the mustard seed. I didn't want to do everything in this video again since I did show you those steps in the first one. So I'm moving on to my focal panel now and I am building my own custom sentiment using part of a phrase from Hive 5 and the rest of the phrase is from the You're a Keeper which was the free with 60 stamp set from the May mini release. So this whole, whole sentiment is going to say buzzing by to say happy bee day. And then there is that card front that I mentioned. So I am going to pop that in my Misty so I can stamp on the inside. And this time, all of the images and the sentiment are all from You're a Keeper. I really, really love this mini set. I know not everybody was able to get their hands on it. I'm hoping that this will be released um, again, maybe for June or maybe later on in the year or next year. But I really do love that set. So... Um, now I'm going to take that dried background and I'm going to trim that out with the honeycomb backdrop and there you can see everything cut out beautifully. I am going to carefully remove just the frame from the die. I'm going to do my best to do that and that way I am going to be able to use the little hexagon pieces that are left behind on another card. It'll be really easy to do that because I can just add a little drop of glue behind each of those pieces and then press it onto another card front and then push them out of the die. But for today's card we're just using the frame and as I said I wanted to create a shaker card so the first thing I'm going to do with that frame is line the back with some eighth of an inch score tape so I'm just going to run that around and um, tear that off with my fingers to make sure that that is well lined and that the acetate that I'm going to use is going to be really well adhered. So once I have that all lined with the tape, I'm going to grab my bone folder and just burnish that tape down and make sure that it is really stuck. And then I can peel off those little release papers. Just always have to wedge my fingernail under the edge there, but they do peel off pretty easily. And then once I've done that, I'm going to take a piece of acetate that I have trimmed it down to four and a quarter by five and a half. So the same exact size as this backdrop and as an A2 standard size card. And I'm just going to line that up. It's a little bit hard to see. It might have been easier if I had done it on maybe some black cardstock or something so I could see more clearly. But um, just being really careful to line that up nice and straight and then smooth that down into place. And there you can see that reflecting in the light. So to that card base, I'm going to add my shaker material. I'm going to add some of the Prisma Glitter from Lawn Fawn. Just tapping out a little pile there. And then I'm going to also add some chunky glitter from Lawn Fawn. I really, really love this stuff. It's so pretty and iridescent. 
And then I also am going to take some Studio Katia Iridescent Tiny Hearts and add a few of those as well. Now that pile is pretty high and I wanted to create a fairly thin card so I did only use one level of foam tape. So I'm just shaking out that pile a little bit to distribute it while still keeping it in the center so it won't get stuck in any of the adhesive. But I have lined the back of that with some thin strips of foam tape that I just trimmed down myself. And now I'm going to carefully line up that frame with the card front. And then there you can see all of that shaker material moving around inside. So fun. So now I'm going to take that focal panel and add some liquid glue to the back of that. You could also use some of the score tape if you wanted to. Um, it can shift a little bit if you use the liquid glue, so you want to make sure that that is uh, really well dried before you uh, move on with the card, um, just so it doesn't shift and then, you know, your focal panel ends up cockeyed because that acetate is very slick. So now I'm going to bring in my images and start to adhere those. I'm going to begin with the branch up at the top of the scene. Just adding that right across that entire focal panel. Next, I'll add the hive hanging down from the center of the branch. And at first I had it a little bit shifted to the right, so I'm just gonna move that quickly before that glue dries. Then I'll take that pennant banner and add some liquid glue behind that, and then drape that across the front of the hive just to make it look a little bit more festive since it is a birthday card. Then I can take the little leaves and flowers and I'm going to embellish that branch just a little bit more, kind of tucking those here and there to fill that out and just make it look more full. And um, yeah, I think it just also adds some nice little extra pops of color. So I'd stamped out three extra of those little leaf clusters and three extra flowers. I'm gonna put two of those over on the left-hand side toward the end of the branch where there's already some leaves. And then the other leaf cluster and flower I'm gonna put on the right-hand side just for some balance there. And then of course I have my bees, the one with the birthday hat. I'm gonna put over on the left-hand side. I'm gonna have his hat overlapping the hive just a little bit so it looks more integrated into the scene. And then the other one I'm gonna put down on the right-hand side toward the sentiment. And I felt like it just needed a little extra something, so I wanted to bring some of that shaker material to the outside of the card. So I'm just adding a little dab of glue in a couple places and I sprinkled out some more of those Studio Katia iridescent hearts and I'm gonna pick those up and just set them down into that glue. I'm using my Studio Katia embellishment wand to pick those up and just making sure that they are going right side up so that it makes sense there. That one time I had uh, two pushed together so just removed one of those and fixed the one that was going to stay. And then I added a couple extra little dots to fill in any empty spaces that I felt like could use one. And that is going to finish off this card. I'll hold that up so you can see all of that detail and then get a look at that shaker material in action. And of course, there is a look at the inside. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell if you want to be alerted whenever I post a new video. All of the products that I use will be listed and linked for you in the description bar below in case you'd like to pick up something for yourself. And here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy if you'd like to keep watching. So thank you guys so much for spending your time with me today. I hope you had a good one, and I will see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.